before we begin today's video, I need to clarify something. I despise burrs. Like, truly despise them. If I was given the option of curing cancer and killing all the birds on the world, admittedly I would take the cure for cancer, but I would seriously consider the eradication of a whole section of our planet's ecosystem. Now the reason for this is that some birds are just incredibly thick, and when I'm walking down a path or I'm driving a car, and the bird doesn't move until the last physical moment and which causes me to freak out, those are the moments where I do consider investing in a shotgun. But there are some birds that even I think look cool, the cassowary and the harpy eagle being some of them. But this bird is perhaps the coolest we've covered on this channel. A bird which the mere whisper of its name will cause snakes to hide under rocks. And that name is the secretary bird perhaps the coolest secretary in the world. So, to set the scene for you, secretary birds are unique for a variety of reasons. First of this, they're the only birds in the genus Sargigeraridae, not to be confused with Sanguinius. And these birds have an incredibly wide range, from the far tip of South Africa, following the savanna and semi-desert, to both southern Sudan and southern Mali. Secretary birds often live for 15 years in the wild, although they have been known to live for up to 20 in captivity. So we have a lot to cover today, so grab a seat and let's join our young secretary bird as it hatches from its egg. Well congrats, you're a nestling secretary bird. And like most birds, you have both a mum and a dad to feed you, which must be a nice change of pace compared to most reptiles. As for right now, you don't have any feathers. On that front, it, for the next few weeks, you'll be on house arrest, mainly because you can't fly, and also your current location is the top of a really tall tree. But also, it's because you are totally reliant on mum and dad, with the pair both going out and, f and getting you and your siblings food and water, often taking turns to do so. When they return, they regurgitate this food or water directly into your mouth, making them one of the few raptors to do so. After a few weeks, when the chicks have started to develop their feathers, this is the point that both parents will leave to collect food, as the risk of predators killing you is slightly lower. After 63 days, stop giving their chicks their daily water ration. So, this will result in the now fledglings leaving the nest in order to acquire water. That being said, they will stay in the same general area as the nest and will return to the same nest every night. You can tell a fledgling apart from an adult by looking at the face. Adults have a bold combination of yellow and red, whereas fledglings will have a dull yellow face. With this newfound freedom, the fledglings will begin to practice the most iconic feature of the species, the kick. The way they will practice this is by simply picking a piece of grass or twigs and then just repeatedly stomping on it. It's also common for fledglings to join their parents foraging and hunting. They will also practice their flight abilities. They will continue to return to the same nest six weeks after they first leave. Once they've left the nest, they will stay with their parents for a time, sleeping in the same tree, until gradually the bond between parent and offspring will dissolve, and the now juvenile secretary bird will leave their parents to establish their own territory. Now secretary birds don't leave their parents as sexually mature, and that by the time they leave their parents, they're usually around four to seven months old with a secretary bird becoming sexually mature at three to four years old. So, like any young adult, they need to go out into the world and find themselves. In the case of the secretary bird, this means getting as far away from their parents as possible, possibly 800 kilometers away from their parents' nest. For this period, they will be focused on simple survival because at this age, whilst nothing actively preys on the secretary bird, they will still need to, need to find and acquire prey, which, unlike what you may have heard, Secretary birds mostly eat small mammals, so things like rats and squirrels. Although they will divulge in the occasional grasshopper, smaller bird, and yes, even snakes. So, how do they catch their prey? Well, unlike pretty much every raptor, secretary birds are not known to hunt in the air. Instead, they choose the tactic of walking along the ground, stamping in the grass. This will act as a way of luring prey out of the grass and into the secretary bird's line of sight. They also have these crest feathers which you can see are attached to their head. During this process, they will be erected. This acts as another way to intimidate their prey. Once a prey item has revealed itself, if it's an insect, they will just simply eat it with their beak and swallow it down their throat. 
If it's a larger size, they will chase after it, utilizing their extremely long legs to reach speeds of up to 20 miles per hour. Once the opportunity has presented itself, the secretary bird will stamp on its prey with the same force as an animal five times its own weight. If that doesn't kill it, the secretary bird will keep stamping until it stops moving. The same applies for when hunting snakes, with some unconfirmed reports saying secretary birds will fly up into the sky with the snake in their talons and drop it onto the floor. Once dead, the secretary bird usually uses its large mouth to swallow the prey whole, although they have been known on occasion to break up the prey into smaller pieces. One of the interesting things about the secretary bird is that it's thought that the way the secretary bird hunts, using its long legs to kill its prey, could be very similar to how the terror birds of the past hunted their prey. Secretary birds are also not above scavenging from dead animals. However, this usually happens after there has been a bushfire, so at least they know the cooked is better than rotting meat. Aside from hunting, which will take up most of the day, the secretary bird will spend most of its time roaming around the Sahara, following the prey and water in the region, and also resting in trees, particularly during the height of the day. This will be the life of the secretary bird until they reach sexual maturity, at three to four years old. Although this does depend, and there have been cases of secretary birds mating as young as two years old. By this time, the adult plumage will have developed, with their mostly white body with black legs and tail feathers. Both sexes look the same, but males have a larger crest and slightly longer tail feathers, but females are generally bigger. Mating is one of the few times secretary birds are not territorial with members of their own species, particularly for first-timers, as they need to attract a mate. In this scenario, where two single secretary birds meet, they now have a choice to make. They can either opt with the sky mating route or the land route. The sky route involves the pair, as you can imagine, taking to the sky as a display of their fitness to their partner, which is not how they usually fly, as in this scenario, they'll be using lots of tight turns and also going at their top speed to demonstrate their fitness. But most of the time, they'll simply glide in the air using the solar winds to lift them up. The ground display will involve the pair chasing one another with their wings up and towards their back. This is the same method they will use when defending their territory. If both are happy with their prospective partner, they will pair up, with the two being monogamous and staying with each other for life. Their next order of business will be to establish a territory, which they will seek to do in areas with large amounts of prey and water with the territories sometimes ranging for 19 square miles. And they will usually defend this territory fiercely from other secretary birds and driving them out of their territory. The only exception to this behavior is in the harsher regions or when there's been a natural disaster. In that case, it's not uncommon for there to be a group of up to 50 secretary birds, all tolerating one another's existence. But these groups are the exception to the rule. So. It's good to imagine them as a, as a high school class who's forced to stay together for a while and then, after all is said and done and they all graduate, they go their separate ways, where only a few friendships transfer into later life. For the average secretary bird, once their territory has been established, they will need to choose a spot to build their nest. Usually, secretary birds will choose the top of the, the acacia tree, but if the tree's tall and is also thorny, it's prime real estate. Once the location's been established, both males and females will start to make the nest, with this structure usually being three to five feet across with a slight dip towards the center, usually lined with, with grass and dung, helping to not only keep the nest integrity, but also acting as an insulator for their eggs. And it goes without saying, in the world of the secretary bird, one of the key phrases, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. As a result, secretary birds will often use the same nest to raise chicks in year after year. This will also be the place where the pair roost together during the night, with them separating in early dawn to forage for food, but always returning to one another. This will either be at midday, where they take a break from foraging, or during the evening, where they return to roost. At this point, with all the foundations laid, they can start raising their chicks. As secretary bird breeding is towards the end of the dry season and the beginning of the wet, the female will lay around two to three eggs. At this point, the pair will take turns guarding the nest although the female will always sit on the nest at night. When one of the partners returns to the nest, the non-incubating partner will bow their head and spread both their wings and tail back, much like a fan. This is thought to be as a sign of affection. At this point, hopefully, we return to the beginning of the video and the cycle will continue.
But look, dude, I'll be honest with you. There's a lot of variables in raising checks. You take the issue of climate change and what comes along with that. So you're looking at greater amounts of wildfires and droughts alongside increasing human development and encroachment in these natural habitats. Although, I do feel the need to point out that the number of secretary birds is not well understood at a global level. So, all we have is a rough estimate based on local sampling. Thus, you end up with a range from a population estimate as low as 6,700 individuals to a high of 67,000 individuals. Still, it's definitely a species worth looking into, particularly because they are known to target rats and other small mammals, which are known to target crops. Thus, this species act as a beneficiary to humanity and one which we would be at a real miss of losing. And also, I just mean look at them. They're incredibly fascinating and also incredibly unique. So, you made it to the end of the video. Good job. Give yourself a gold star in the comments below. Before I let you go and send you on to wherever YouTube sends you next, as you may be able to tell, we're getting close to 500 subscribers, as well as the one year anniversary. So, if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them at the end of the next video or whenever we reach the 500 subscriber mark, which you better be sure to watch as we're returning to the land down under to talk about one of the most unique residents. In the meantime, check this video out on the missing predators of the UK. And until then, stay safe, look before you cross the road and I'll see you in the next one.